I'm Bryant Gumbel for HBO's Real Sports. Next up, a look at how Donald Trump used his brand of bravado and huge promises to woo all of Scotland, why today he's so widely vilified there, and why his former loyalists are now warning American voters. Call it a cautionary tale. Perhaps you've seen him on television. You know, the man who says he's going to make America great again? He's the no-nonsense billionaire who promises to save our country. But that you already know. You will make America great again. What you may not know is that this isn't the first country Donald Trump made that promise to, or how his other promises turned out. About 10 years ago, Donald Trump stepped off a plane in Scotland and made a vow to build the greatest golf course the world had ever seen. He had found 1,400 pristine acres in the town of Aberdeen, a majestic stretch of coastline along the North Sea, untouched for thousands of years. And that's where he told me he would pick up where the other creator left off. Well, it's beautiful now. When I finish with it, it will be more beautiful. There's no piece of land like this anywhere in the world for creating what I call the world's greatest golf course. So what's it going to look like? We will have a hotel. We will have a clubhouse. We will have housing and things. But as far as the land itself, it'll look exactly as it looks right now, but better. And Trump said that wasn't all he would create here. What we were promised was billions of dollars and thousands of jobs. At the time, Alex Salmon was the head of the Scottish government, the first minister of parliament. And when he heard Trump's plans, he got on board. I thought they were a good idea. You were one of his big supporters. I, I supported the investments, yes, because they were good for Scotland, as I saw it. More than anyone, it was Salmon who rallied the country to back the Trump plan. We can see the, the social and economic benefits. I mean, 6,000 jobs across Scotland. He convinced enough political bigwigs and more than enough of the locals. You know about the Donald Trump project? Yes. What do you think? It's absolutely a must for Aberdeen, for the people of Aberdeen. Is it a good idea, do you think? Excellent idea. Of course, let him do it. I'm 100% behind him. That was then. Today, after a decade of dealing with Donald Trump, Salmon and a lot of other Scots say they made a mistake, that they were seduced by Trump's promises, that he talked big but didn't deliver, not on the jobs he promised or the billions he said he would invest. And on top of that, he came to be known as a brash, loudmouth bully who tried to intimidate those who stood in his way. What's his image in Scotland today? Oh, dreadful. <laughs> Sub-zero. Uh, Donald couldn't get elected the dog catcher. Well, forgive me for telling you what you already know, but he's the front runner on the Republican side in America. Yes, you know, it's not really for us to determine whether America elects a Democrat or Republican, a left winger, a right winger. I mean, that's up to the, the people of America. Uh, but a choice between sanity and insanity, uh, that's something else entirely. And if we're talking about sanity and insanity, you would put him... Not in the same spectrum. Let's start at the beginning. It's 2008, and the Donald is buying pieces of land in Aberdeen to turn them into fairways. But then he ran into this man, Michael Forbes, a local fisherman whose family had lived on a farm here for generations, smack in the middle of where Trump wanted to build his golf course. To Trump, the place was a dump, littered with tractors and equipment and spare tires. But to Forbes, this was home. He thought he can come up here and just buy everything, you know, just offer somebody a stupid money and they'd sell it. Oh, yes, Mr. Trump, yes, Mr. Trump, yes, you can have it, you know. <laughs> ah, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Everybody's got a price. No. What's your price? That's what Donald Trump thought. Everybody a price. No, I haven't got a price. Let's get realistic here. If Donald Trump came up in his big limousine now mm -hmm. with bags full of money yeah. and said, here's $5 million, yeah. you would say? Shove it. <laughs> Why do I think you really mean this? Oh, I mean it all right. <laughs> so Trump tried plan B, arguing that Michael Forbes' farm was in such bad shape that it should forcibly be taken from him, for a price, by the government. Go down and take a look at how badly maintained that piece of property is. It's disgusting to look at it. 
But plan B didn't work either. What was his reaction when you said to him, no, I'm not going to confiscate Mr. Forbes's property so you can use it for your golf course? Well, it was a sort of puzzled reaction. Why on earth not? It was almost as if there was no rational reason why this possibly <laughs> could be an obstacle in his way, that the, you know, the greater Trump golf course was obviously more important than anyone else's mere house or home. Secure in his home, Forbes decided to go head to head with Trump. He decided, you ready for this? To make his farm an even bigger eyesore, just so he could ruin the view at Trump's future golf course. You might have cleaned it I up. I might have done, but not now. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'll gather up some more rubbish, eh? Let him see that. You're threatening to make it even nastier. Oh, I'm not threatening. I'm promising. <laughs> even his sweetest kidney pie mum got upset. She told us Trump was not just full of himself, but also full of something else. Crap. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you say crap? Crap. <laughs> have you ever yes. used that kind of language on anybody else before? No. I don't swear and I don't call anybody names, but Donald Trump makes you. And soon other locals were joining the rebellion, like Mickey Foote, whose property would look out over the golf course and the condos and the houses and the luxury hotel. This is a piece of country that you couldn't replace. That's why he came here, because it's a beautiful piece of country. So why does he want to shit all over it? Trump would be transforming some of Aberdeen's majestic and unspoiled 4,000-year-old sand dunes and making them part of his golf course. Dunes that were considered so precious by the government that they were designated a special site of scientific interest. That left Mickey Foote and other environmentalists livid. And that was even before Trump said, don't worry, I'm an environmentalist too. I've received many environmental awards over the years. I think the greatest thing I've ever done for the environment is what I'll be doing right here in Aberdeen. He says he's going to save the dunes. He says these dunes have been here for 4,000 years. I haven't needed saving yet, Bernie. Foote said Trump was selling a bill of goods he'd never deliver on, using his bluster and celebrity to hoodwink the locals. They dream they're going to be in the jacuzzi with Tiger Woods. They're going to be bumping into Johnny Depp on Union Street. Sean Connery's going to have an apartment here. All Donald's friends are going to come and buy real estate here. That's bullshit. He knows that. Even if they're here, the guy down, down in town isn't ever going to hang out with them. No. They drive past it in the morning to go to work. They drive past it in the evening. The only difference it's going to make, there's going to be a fucking great tower with a T on the top of it. But even as the natives grew restless in Scotland, Back at his castle in New York, the king wasn't worried, certainly not about the pesky Michael Forbes, who still had no plans to move just so Donald Trump could build his golf course. Bernie, let's see what happens. You watch. <laughs> what does that mean? You'll find out. Let's see what happens. Now look, if a meteor falls out of the sky and lands on his head, you better have an alibi that day. Bernie. Let's see what happens. It's a long-term saga. Okay. I've had many people over the years that have opposed me. And you know what? They end up being my best friends. Are you suggesting that someday Michael Forbes and you might be buddies? That's possible. I've had stranger things happen. Well, it didn't turn out that way. When we checked in on things three years later in 2011, Trump had nearly finished his golf course just as he had promised but he hadn't won over Michael Forbes, who said the course had driven out wildlife that had lived there for thousands of years. Trump says, oh, but the wildlife will come back. How can he come back? There's nothing here for him to come back to. Forbes' home was now surrounded by the golf course and decorated with anti-Trump slogans. We will never be friends, never, ever. Can't stand the man. In fact, he's not a man, he's a baby. But Trump himself was quite pleased with the course and even came up with a not-so-surprising name for it. It will be called Trump International Golf Links. I'm shocked. You're, you're putting your name on the... Well, I've decided to do, do that after great, great thought. <laughs> it was only 2011, but there were already rumors that Trump might one day run for president. And he said his golf course showed voters he knew how to get things done. You can never quit. You can never stop. You can never give up. 
So we shouldn't look at this and say, here's a guy who couldn't convince Michael Forbes to do something. How the hell is he going to convince the Chinese to do something? Well, Bernie, you have to look at it a little more positively than that. Michael Forbes and everybody else opposed what I was doing. Right. And I'm 12 months away from opening the greatest golf course anywhere in the world. I had a total and complete victory. Except for one small detail. Trump out! Trump out! Trump out! The growing anti-Trump resentment turned into all-out war. You're in litigation. Who are you suing? We're suing essentially Scotland. Nobody sues a country. We are. We're suing a country. We're doing very well. And I think I'm doing a great service for that country. The country, of course, wasn't so sure about that. Trump was fighting Scotland's plan to create clean energy by building these giant windmills in the waters off of his golf course and threatening to pull the plug on his entire investment and all those jobs if the country didn't back down. They are so unattractive, so ugly, so noisy, and so dangerous that if Scotland does this, I think Scotland will be in serious trouble. These windmills are as tall as Trump Tower. That's like a massive skyscraper coming out of Aberdeen Bay. They make noise. They create shadows. Well, listen, they say this is going to provide energy for 68,000 homes. I've built a masterpiece. And I don't want to see the masterpiece destroyed or even hurt by these terrible things. The environmentalists love the windmill idea, but this time they weren't alone in their fight against Trump. His longtime supporter, Alex Salmon, backed the windmills too. What was his reaction to you about your decision? Well, I, I went from hero to zero. I went from the, the greatest first minister that Scotland was ever likely to see to, to be Mad Alec. And I, I think the tragedy is that, that for Donald, as well as for everyone else, that if somebody had said no to him, perhaps when he was five years old or a toddler, then perhaps his uh, emotional development would have uh, progressed uh, as, as that of most of us does. Of course, there was one local who didn't mind the idea of windmills in his backyard. Guess who? If it pisses off Trump, I'm really delighted. <laughs> Anything he hates, I love. I hope he sees him from every angle he's standing in. By now, it was five years into Michael Forbes's rebellion, and he'd gone from anonymous farmer to national hero. He proudly showed us an award he'd won, Scotsman of the Year. This is my top Scot award. You know, for putting up with all Trump's bullshit. Do you know who the People's Choice Award for the uh, Scotman of the Year was? That was a poll of a small liquor company where people that were fighting me were ringing, 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 ringing. Anyway, Trump said he had some new awards to show off, too, including one that picked his course as one of the very best in the whole world. The Rob Report, highly respected, last week they came up and they gave this award to me, the best. Best of the best. That's even better, the best of the best. You're right. But today, many here see the project as a failure. It hasn't generated the 6,000 jobs Trump promised, but a total of about 150. As for the condos, homes, and hotel, well, there's still only ideas on the drawing board. He didn't deliver or come anywhere near delivering uh, on the promises and commitments he made. Uh, and, you know, there comes a gap between the, the boasts and the reality, uh, which is just too far to bridge. But for Alex Salmon, the real concern is what Donald Trump could do next. You said he is singularly unsuited to be president of the United States. Based on my experience, and this is entirely about my experience, I am saying that I'm just about the last person I would want to see in the White House is the Donald Trump. Just how unpopular is Donald Trump around these parts today? Well, when Trump recently proposed temporarily banning Muslims from entering the U.S., that gave the people in Scotland an idea, ban Trump from entering their country permanently. It became the largest petition to the Westminster Parliament in the history of online petitions. To keep him out of the United Kingdom. Yes. He wants to ban all Muslims. We just want to ban one Donald. That's right. I mean, there are some things that Scotland does not want to be associated with. And Donald Trump right now represents many of these things. 
We tried to find out what Donald Trump thought of the former first minister's less than complimentary remarks. A Trump staffer told us that Alex Salmond is, quote, a laughingstock and a joke, and that Trump still plans to finish the project he promised, and might have already done it if Salmon and his government hadn't wasted so much time fighting with him. Donald himself was not available for a sit-down interview with us. He was too busy at the moment, we were told, on other matters. We're going to make America great again, greater than ever before, okay? Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and be sure to catch the rest of our latest edition of Real Sports all month long on HBO.